statues that were made for William of Orange to represent the four then known continents. But as Gemma Gofton has been finding out, Dunham Massey has a much more significant link with Africa. I used to love coming here to picnics at Dunham Massey when I was a child, but I had no idea that the place held such significance for some people. The National Trust property is special in the Rastafarian faith because it is a place visited by their leader, Haile Selassie. Haile Selassie, who they call the King of Kings and Conquering Lion of Judah, was the Emperor of Ethiopia, who could trace his ancestry back to King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. In Jamaica, he was revered as a living god, and his original name, Raz Tafari, was used for the new religion. Then the other Prince of Darkness let loose his black legions. In defiance of the world, Il Duce took the sword. In 1935, Italy under Mussolini invaded Ethiopia and Selassie personally led his small, ill-equipped army against a quarter of a million Italian troops. From another part of the field, warlike chieftains watched too. He was barracked when he appeared at the League of Nations appealing for help. <laughs> Trying to quell the disturbance, lights turned out. The disturbers ejected, arrested, and he is able to make his appeal. Support eventually came from Britain, where he lived in exile between 1936 and 1941. On board the liner Orford, the man whose name has been on the world's lips for months past, the emperor without a kingdom, the king who is still received as a king but has no land to rule. It was during these years that he was contacted by the 10th Earl of Stamford, whose seat was at Dunham Massey. Moved by his plight, the Earl, Roger Gray, invited the emperor to stay. And in this place he found strength, he found a brotherhood with a man that he never knew before from across the seas, distant lands. And so we're here today to celebrate that friendship. This is an amazing staircase, isn't it? It is. It's very grand. Where are we? I get a tour of the rooms the Emperor would have used. This is a very opulent room, so this is where the Empress stayed. Yeah, this was the bedroom that the Empress stayed in, and it's one of the most beautiful rooms in the house. By comparison, Roger, Roger's room was very much more modest. He had very modest taste, so his room was nothing like this, but he gave the best room to the Emperor when he stayed here. And it's an unusual friendship, so what do you think they spoke about? What did they have in common? I think really the friendship started as a coming together of minds. They obviously shared something that would last for the rest of their lives. So they were obviously in, both interested in politics and that's the kind of thing that they probably would have discussed here. We also know that the Emperor introduced Roger to Ethiopian jazz, so I like to think that they sat in here and listened to music. And after the Emperor left here, they corresponded via letter, um, and we've got some of them here, haven't we, actually? What's actually written in them? The letters and cards are really interesting. Um, in this letter, this is a letter that Roger sent to the Emperor, and it talks about how he'd flown the Ethiopian flag from the roof of the hall on His Majesty's birthday. So this letter was sent in 1945, a long time after he'd been to stay. We've also got cards, Christmas cards and greeting cards that were sent from the Earl, sent from the Emperor. And just by you, there's a cigarette case as well. What's the story behind that? The cigarette case was a gift from the Emperor to Roger Gray when the Emperor came to stay at Dunham Massey. Um, on the front, there's an emblem. 
and inside there's an inscription that says, The gift of the Emperor of Ethiopia to Roger Gray, Earl of Stamford, 17th of June 1938. And underneath here it says, La justice ne peut pas which means justice will never die. Roger was really proud of this. He'd show it to everybody. He'd import cigarettes from Turkey to fit into the case because he couldn't buy them in this country that would fit. And um, he'd offer them to everybody and show them the case and tell them the story behind it. But interestingly, the Earl wasn't a smoker, was he? No, no, he wasn't a smoker. Dennis Wrigley was a friend of the Earl's and remembers him as very left-leaning for a member of the aristocracy. On winter evenings, he would play me these magnificent uh, carbon uh, recordings, you know, carbon tubes before we had tape recorders and the like. And um, he had uh, speeches by Lloyd George, by Balfour, even by Adolf Hitler. And we used to listen to these and analyse them. And uh, he was really quite an amazing man. I have to ask you, did you witness the cigarette case? Oh, it came out regularly, yes. <laughs> and uh, the, he was so proud of that. Uh, so, so regularly did he show it. And he was, I think, aware of the international significance of Haile Selassie. It wasn't just that he was a, a man of immense stature in, uh, on a world stage. It was that for him, he was someone who he wanted to walk with. And therefore, although he had many friends in high places, I think it's highly significant that he stood by this one man who was treated so abominably. During his lifetime, the Earl flew the Ethiopian flag on July the 23rd, his friend, the Emperor's birthday. And it's a tradition the National Trust are proud to restore today. The National Trust has also joined together with the local Rastafarian community to put on today's music and drama event to ensure the story of the Earl and the Emperor is kept alive. One wants to make us believe in lost myths. Parts of our history are corrupted and re-examined. I think it's something that Haile Selassie and the Earl, you know, would have liked to have seen, you know, years later. So for me, it's a really, it's a really special thing to be able to be here today and uh, for the young people to perform and uh, for the musicians and, you know, to play their music and just enjoy themselves. Marcus Hercules has been working with young people in South Manchester and has produced the performance to coincide with the 75th anniversary of the Emperor's visit. I think the message is very important because it's the same thing I feel like uh, the Emperor stood for and what the Earl stood for, which is that treating uh, a neighbour or a friend or somebody you don't even know, like they're your brother or they're your sister, and just kind of that oneness, uh, which in to me is uh, a key part of the success of, you know, humankind. And visiting Dunham Massey for the first time today is Haile Selassie's great-grandson. It's just evidently clear that this was the, the best of the British aristocracy, that my great-grandfather enjoyed their, their gratitude and, and grace. Haile Selassie lived in exile in the UK for four years before returning to Ethiopia. He spent just four days at Dunham Massey, but it's clear that his visit here held a special place in the hearts of the Earl and the Emperor. His Majesty came to other places, he came to Bath, yeah, he came to other places around the UK, but when he visited here, you know, for the Earl aristocrat to take him and welcome him and make him feel blessed here, it's a blessed place. Give thanks. Love. What an amazing story from this beautiful house. Now, don't forget, you can catch us again on the BBC iPlayer, but we're back next Monday at 7.30 on BBC One. Until then, goodbye. Next week, how dance is helping rebuild the lives of addicts in the North West. The buzz that I get now is better than any drug. Honestly, I really love it. <laughs> <laughs>